I went back to my hometown, Alliance, Ohio, to say my goodbyes to my grandfather. Looking at his grave, I couldn't say goodbye to what he stood for. Protect the innocent, feed the poor, help the need, service the world. There's something in me, something driving me to pull up on the world and switch my greatness into high gear. Singers, lyricists, producers, content creators. I gotta swerve on my roadblocks, take the highway of thinking and let passion GPS. To the music industry, that makes me public enemy number one. But I gotta get on this bike, I gotta escape, and I gotta stand for something. In other words, I gotta swerve on my gift. My name you ask? I'm Swerve Birdsong, artist, musician, martial artist, and student of life. After many years dealing with the music business, I decided to leave them in the rear view and put some miles on my own path as I now travel around the world from the ATL to Germany to Taiwan and Japan and back. I'm sharing my music and my road rules for life with anyone who'll listen. I'm in here. This is my gift and I want to share it with you. So pull up on me in my musical journey and I'll show you how to swerve in your gift. Let's get it. Welcome to the land of the speaker box where 808's dropping and throwing up A's. Atlanta, Georgia. Peace up, A-Town down. I'm Swerve Birdsong and let me just start off by saying your gift will make a lane for you and drive you to the world. Your gift is your vehicle. It's your whip. It's your transportation to put you in front of the right people, places, and things it needs to shine. How do I know? Because I've been shining for a minute now, man. I ain't new to this. <laughs> I've been a high beam. Seriously, I got my humble beginnings singing in school, pep rallies, church, worked my way up to Hosea Feed the Hungry at Turner Field in Atlanta. I had a gig singing at Underground Atlanta. I would take my guitar, a laptop, a speaker, and just go do my thing, man. gotta love the A. They always support young entrepreneurs trying to work their way up, especially young artists. Shout out to World Changers Church International. I got a few stripes from there as a youth specialist and learned a lot from K. Joe International. Kenton Jones, what's up, boy? Man, just a lot of love in the ATL and a lot of talented people that I've been pulling good, positive energy from for some years now. It's just a place of inspiration a place of innovation and a place that respects the arts in a heavy way. Where do I start? Give or take a couple hundred years ago, my life was in a ditch. My personal relationships sucked in the music industry I was a part of just kept getting more and more jacked up. I desperately was looking for a change. I realized I had to go back to my roots to address the problem. Back to my hometown Alliance, Ohio. That's before getting my humble beginnings in the ATL and just immerse myself in helping to transform my community and the folks who live there. You see, not only was this therapeutic for me, but I got to help out others in the process. Just had Carnation Day in Alliance, Ohio. That mode was litty. Feel like a big kid right now. I ain't seen fireworks like that in years. 
during those years, I realized that it was time for me to let my inner superhero shine, that I could use my music and my voice to help others unlock their skills, talents, ideas, inventions, information, and ultimately, wait for the plug, swerving their gifts. So when I came back in 2021, I was cranked up and ready. My road rules are in place now, new bike, heavy in my martial arts training, new perspective, new health, and most importantly, my music is better than ever now. You see, I've been swerving in my gift ever since, and as I travel the world, I just wanna use my music, my artistry, and my influence to inspire others to locate their talents and express themselves as well. You know what? No more talking. I think it's time for you to swerve in your gift. Let's get it. Screw. You need a roadmap. You need a roadmap. I'm gonna say it again. You, you, you need a roadmap. You need vision. Vision is your roadmap. See, some people can only see where they are and where they've been. Not too many people can see where they're going. Not too many people have clear vision. How do you get that? I'll tell you. I got you. Write 13 to 20 pages. See, when you start writing your vision, you already initiated it. You already started it. That movement, that action you're taking, that's you making the first move. It's already started. 13 to 20 pages. What do you see people going to say about you at your eulogy? Can you think that far? Can you think all the way up into your casket? It's a positive thing to think about what people are going to be thinking about you when you're in the casket. They should be celebrating you. They should be inspired by you. What did you leave behind to activate them to get into their gift? That is clear vision. Because if you can see all the way down there, that means you can see all the steps it took to get there. Now we know where to start. This is why you have your vision. 13 to 20 pages. That turns into eight key points. That paragraph should turn into a vision statement. You should be able to tell this statement to somebody in the elevator before they get to their floor. It should be that rehearsed in your mind. You see, if you map out your trip, then you know what kind of friends you need for the journey. See, the fact that you align with your vision means that your character aligns with your vision. It means that you got some discipline, you got some wills and wants, some things you will do and some things you won't do. And that means you're gonna hang around those kind of people. See, you don't get somebody for who you are and where you're at now. You get somebody for where you're going. Let me go ahead and throw you this proper introduction. Born in Arkansas and now residing in the ATL. Peace up, A-Town, damn. Najee Dorsey is a visual artist, gallerist, 
producer and the CEO and founder of Black Art in America, the top platform for African-American art in the country. His acclaimed artworks have now been featured in exhibitions, both nationally and internationally. And in 2022, Najee established the Black Art in America Gallery and Gardens in East Point, Georgia, and now recognized as one of the top destinations in the South for art, Make some noise for my man's Najee Dorsey. What's up, Najee? It's good, bro. It's good to be here. Thanks for the uh, the words. You know, it's it's a beautiful thing when you get a chance to live in your live in your purpose. You know. Congrats to all the things you're doing, man. Uber Uber talented. You know, the world the world seems to be uh, finally getting around to recognizing your brilliance. So let's uh, let's get it. Did y'all get that? Need to make sure they got that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, being an artist and being blessed to find and work from the crossroads of the art and creative side and then also the business acumen side has allowed us to build a space and build a community that's all about, you know, Black visual art and culture. Documenting who we are, you know, the journey, our contributions, our successes, the, the struggle. Uh, you know, building a space to continue to educate people because, you know, we can kind of get distracted in this wilderness, you know, and so we have to constantly be reminded uh, of how wonderful we are in our lineage uh, and be an example. All they got to do is check the resume. I do everything from, you know, I'm a uh, museum exhibit and collected artists have been for 20 plus years. I'm a producer. My wife and I, we're philanthropists. We're collectors. It's too many boxes to even try to check. You know, I would just say that we are true to, to black visual culture, man. Like we, you know, it's, we're the real deal upholding who we are visually and, and sharing that with the world and supporting artists and then helping collectors find wonderful works that they can live with. So everything that we do is centered in that. You know, it's centered in community, but also the importance of being a sustainable company that can continue to grow and give back and hire people and, you know, be uh, patrons of, of the things that we want to see in this world. That's kind of how we how we swerve. Let it ride, let it ride. I just got great instincts. You know, I see opportunity. I can tell when it's right for me because things seem to unfold on the, onto themselves and the avenues just kind of open up. You know, I felt like I've always been favored. I look at it as though every day I'm putting a brick down, I'm planting a seed, and everything that I do is 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 really in this in this ecosystem of art. You know, it's all it's all integrated. Yeah, I'm reminiscing of a tribe right. called Quest. On expedition for that love oh, sweet, huh? I love your mind eyes, eyes and your prayers. Make a brother turn a blind eye to the reds. Nothing's the same. Sluts don't impress. Mm. Got me feeling drinking. How you sexy in the canines pose? I'm digging you. Can you feel me in your daylight soul? Man, ain't I so out the box? We on the Vision stage. is how you align with the people, places, and things that are for your heart. Because your vision should be in direct connection with your passion. But you're not here for people. You are here for what's in your heart. So if you know what's in your heart already, chase after that. And when you're in that lane and when you're pursuing those things, you will run into the PPTs, the people, places, and things that align with that. Because that's the lane. That's where you'll find fulfillment and satisfaction. That's where you'll find wholeness. You'll find that wholeness in the lane that's in alignment with your heart. You can't miss anything if you're going for what's in your heart. In that lane, you'll find people who are for the journey, not for the now. Success happens when preparation meets opportunity. If you're prepared, the opportunity is going to come and the success is going to follow right behind it. You got to swerve in your gift, man. You got to swerve in your gift, man. You got to swerve in your gift, boy. Get that roadmap together, get that vision, and let's get it. Scoop! I remember 
early on, I mean, this is before Satir and I had got married. This is one thing that I, I'll say is like, I think it's the greatest compliment I ever got. I had just moved back to Arkansas from uh, spending some time in Southern Illinois. And I was in between jobs. And I went and applied at this uh, Holiday Inn for this position they had at, at this front desk. And they had a new manager in from Memphis, which is a big city, you know, more progressive than where I grew up. And I had my interview. And before I got home, he had called to offer me the job. And But my mom picked up the phone. And he had to talk with my mom. And he told her, he said, how impressed that he was with her son. And he said, your son has the power to move the world. And he said that about me as a 21-year-old cat. You know, and I believe that and I embrace that. I feel like I do have the power to move the world. And I think it's because, you know, I have a clear heart. I'm a giver. My mom was a giver. I get that from my mom, the generosity. I think I probably get my work ethic from my dad. My mom was a strong worker too, but my dad, I approach everything with the best of intentions and a work ethic. Like I tell, I've told people before, I say, you may outrun me, but you ain't gonna outwork me. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta crank up, man. I mean, crank up. I mean, crank all the way up. You're not regular, you diesel. So you don't got no business hanging around with regular people. You gotta crank up on diesel fuel. Get around people who celebrate you. Get around people who happy to say good things about you. Nice, nice. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, that was a nice one. Ooh. You're not regular. It's got to be intentional. You're not just going to find people saying positive things and great things about you. You got to intentionally choose who's going to be around you. Instead of just trying to be around you. Space, all the videos can be deleted. I'm trying to do something over here. Thank you. Okay, what's happening, G? Ready, All up ready, though. What's up, boy? What's up, boy? You, you. I was, I, I was trying to, I was trying to do the salute. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think, I think part of it has always been I've been naturally drawn to people that's older and uh, and wiser, like my. The people that I'm closest with, they're 10, 20 years my senior. There's wisdom that's there. There's a lot that they have to offer. And then they're also in different spaces too, you know, author, philanthropist, you know, VP for nonprofit, developer. My friends, with, you know, they're, they're dynamos in their own field. It all goes together. So, you know, great energy, great spirit, and then a love for, for black people. Definitely my closest friend is like me, you know, a love for black people, a love for black culture. You know, and just a strong, strong work ethic, and they're and they're great examples, man. Like these are people who you you know you want going to bat with you. You know, they just great humans. Period. I mean that 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 kind of crank up. See, you got them regular cars that just care about themselves. They trip, they families trip to the store, to school, to the office, to work and back. But you got to think like an Optimus Prime. You ain't for just your trip. You for the collective. When you think for the collective, you can collect a lot more talent, skills, ideas, information, inventions. You can retain more information when you're thinking about more than just yourself. Get around people who celebrate what you're about to do, who can see it with you. Basically, we're gonna do 60, oh, 61 shots to make it a three minute documentary. Yes. Let's go, let's get it. Yo, so these ain't just metaphors to get a show or to get a check or to try to gain stardom or get more views on the social media or nothing like that. This is real talk. You are customized. 
Sometimes you feel like you've been in the shop, you know, like you just got four flats and you got all your paint and all your beauty stripped off of you and you just jacked up. But you got to understand you're going through a customizing process. You're getting kitted up. Some of them other cars may look a little better, but when they pop open your hood, you perform differently. When it feels like you're going through the worst, that's you being road tested and approved. You are being put to the test because you're raising your value. Cause I can tell. You made for the long haul, you made for the long road, you made for the long journey. That's what you're designed to do. This is why I say you got to get around people who think that way. Because some people may just be really innocent trying to give you the best they can give you, but it doesn't relate to you because they're just going to be regular the rest of their life. And that's okay. The only way you can relate to them is to show them, to be the example, to put yourself on display, and then you close the gap by giving them the opportunity to come up to where you are. Those are diesel friends. Those are diesel PPTs. Those are diesel people, places, and things. And if you can't find them around you, get online and find some dead people who influence the world and hang around them. Hang around Miles Monroe. Hang around Steve Jobs. Hang around all the greats. Anybody who's passed away but left a mark on this world, hang around Kobe a little bit. It ain't nothing, man, to get around diesel people. Don't make excuses. Get away from anybody who's regular and get around the diesel. Let's go, man. Swerve. Scoop. Man, you gotta swerve on your roadblocks. I'm talking about any obstruction, anything that's in the way of you seeing your vision clearly. You gotta swerve on that. Change won't do this. I'ma get it how I get it. Don't be worried about my business. I don't try for high scores. All I see is winning. You can catch me grind time. Bustin', bustin', stellar versus never clocking out. On call like a teleworker. My phone be vibrating so much that it be twerking. Key to swerving though, you gotta be making moves. You gotta have momentum. When your defense is worthless, yeah. my haters, my motivators, y'all yeah. might as well yeah. be my servants. Yeah. You be fake legit, why would I quarrel with persons? Yeah. Most of y'all for the show, uh -huh. all you get is the curtains. Wow. So if you're moving forward and you're making moves, and you see that naysayer right there, you see that person, place, or thing, that PPT, looking to slow you down. All I know, they gon' say, they gon' say, they gon' say, It, it takes a lot, you know, it takes a lot to kind of really piece the puzzle because we didn't grow with a silver spoon in our mouth. We didn't, you know, we didn't come to doing what we do and having a network of people to really support. Like most of us are first generation trying to figure this out. I see people go out of their way to try to connect with people who really are not in a position to help them because they have something in their mind for what a collector should be, what a collector should look like, what a philanthropist should look like, you know, what a producer should look like, you know, what an artist should look like. You know, I break all those those molds and those myths, man. You know, I'm a myth buster because, I me, mean, I came straight from the cotton fields of Arkansas. You know, I was chopping cotton at 12 years old. I'm an art school dropout. I filed bankruptcy when I moved to Atlanta. You know, I had some stuff I had to try to get, get over. And, and in spite of all of that, man, we built, you know, this huge community of people who believe in what we do and, and attach themselves to our project and, and believe in Najee, you know. You know, got 800 FICO, nine great credit. We bought our, bought our building cash. We started a line of Garden Art for the Soul, which is a which is a brand of uh, art products that's used uh, for those that love the garden and get out in the yard. 
but you can have some some images that reflect your culture to, to go out into that kind of space. And so we've just been unconventional, looking for looking for the little gaps and in, in the, the spaces that people don't even think to even try to try to get into. I think the biggest roadblock for me personally is, um, and I won't say necessarily roadblock, but something that I have to constantly navigate and I've grown over time is is navigating the personal relationships that I that I have with people in the industry, honestly. I believe in these artists that we take on to have a a more meaningful relationship in their development and their growth and we make an investment in that. And when you do that for a period of time and then they decide to leave to pursue something they think is better, you know, or the grass is greener, I've had a tendency to take those things kind of personal. There's growth and development on my end that I'm having every day, but it's because people don't see everything you do. They see the results. They see some of the results of the things that are tangible. But, you know, when you're building a house, you don't see that foundation. You don't see that lumber in the wall. You don't see that drywall. You don't see those studs, um, insulation and, and all the wiring and, and the plumbing and everything. What you see is the facade. You see the wall. I think people are so quick to want it so fast that they don't understand that, you know, this is it's a, it's a long road. You know, this is a long journey. My colleagues say, well, the things that I do for, for our community, I can do it for the broader community too. Every project don't have to be just black artists, you know, and I've struggled with that because I felt like if you got a champion for us, like why would you, why would you want to invite that champion to dilute what he's doing for us? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, because they, you know, the majority market, they, they've always had it. I mean, they've always had the advantage. You know, like artists, artists of any yoke need help. You know, I'm not going, I'm not going to say that's not the case. But is they get, they got way more opportunities than we do. That's the thing that I've struggled, I've struggled with uh, some recently. We need us champion us. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't nothing wrong with want to see our community thrive. And then the resources that are set aside to focus just on us. That's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Swerve on not thinking big enough. If it's impossible, you're supposed to do it. Because that means it takes faith. Come get your blah, 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 blah. Come, come get your blah, 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 blah. That means that it's big. If you dream in small, possible things to do, you're not dreaming big enough. Think bigger and swerve on that negativity, swerve on that minimal stuff, and let's get it, man. Scoop. Stay in your lane. Some people don't get it. I'm watching myself. I'm speaking bold to influence myself. I'm using my artistry to touch me first. So sometimes I speak with boldness. I'll be speaking with confidence. And I stay in that lane of success. I make sure I reach my destination before I even start. I want to have the attitude of success before I even hit the gas. I stay in my lane that way. You see, you can't get your business done if you don't mind your business. You can't be over here in somebody else's lane. GoPro, start recording. When I first started playing the guitar, I didn't know the process it would take just to get through one song. The calluses on your skin from the vibrations of the strings. The aching in your hand from gripping the strings with one finger and the finger and get that. Consistency is the key. Stay in your lane. Just stay there. See, somebody's made for this terrain over here. Their character has been tested and approved for that terrain, for that land, for that ground. And if you try to jump over in somebody else's success and you don't have the character for it, you're gonna have a head-on collision.
that's been like my strength. I've, I've always been able to identify talent. I've always, I've never had fear of making an investment. Uh, I've never uh, been one to kind of shy away from just doing my own thing and taking and taking the leadership role to make things come about, you know? But I feel like I could do that with anything. It's just like my passion is art. You know, sometimes I could be in a restaurant and I'd be like, man, if I had to wait on people, I'd kill it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know how to serve. You got to know how to serve in order to be great in anything. You know, you got to create something that people want, you know, one, and then you got to be good to, in execution and making people feel good about the investment of, of their time and their energy in, in your project. And the more people you're able to help, the more successful you're going to be. It's about community, man. It's about the upliftment of black people. The fact that, you know, we can work from a center of excellence and passion and joy when you come to iSpace, man, I want you to feel like cheers. Like, you, you know, you're not going to some stuffy gallery. You know, you're gonna come in and the, and the team has learned from my example. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to Black Art in America. Welcome home. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of vibe that you're gonna come into, you know? I think when you're putting that out into the world, the world understands that we need more of that. And it's gonna shift the resources to support that. <laughs> You gotta stay in your lane. You gotta have these blinders on. You can't be looking left and looking right. If you in your vehicle and you driving, or if you on your skateboard, you on your bike, whatever is your mode of transportation, if you looking all around and you looking in somebody else's lane and you paying more attention to what's happening over there, BOW! You just gonna wreck, you just gonna crash. It's gonna be quick. It's easy to wreck, but it's hard to recover. You gotta stay in your lane. Stay in your gift, stay in your passion. You were designed for what's in your heart. The way that you saw it in your heart. Somebody else may be doing something similar, but you gotta do it the way that you saw it in your heart. Stay in your lane, stay in your passion. Don't let your talent take you somewhere your character can't keep you. Make sure that you stay focused on where you're going, put your blinders on, because if you're always looking at somebody else's success, it's gonna distract you from yours. And you might be that one step away from stepping into the promised land, from stepping into that territory, from finally meeting those coordinates that you set inside your heart. finally begin to that destination and then you hit a side street that's going it ain't going forward or back it's just going off to the side you get lost stay in your lane know your lane be confident you can do this just stay where you gotta go my camera person just ran into this bike because she wasn't staying in her lane you see what happens Fuck the show them Show them what happens. You crash, you wreck. That's what happens. <laughs> Stay in your lane, man. Let's work on our gift. Let's get it. Let's go. The culinary art scene in Atlanta is second to none and the sole reason for my extreme workout regimen, but I'll let you decide for yourself. It's about that time for me to grab a little something to eat. Why don't y'all roll with me? Let me show you some of my favorite restaurants. Let's get it. I wanna touch you, I wanna see you, I wanna know the words 
important thing is take highways you got to take highways you got to think highly enough about yourself to take the highway of thinking 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 as an artist a singer songwriter producer a lyricist an author I retain a lot of information. I remember a lot of scenes. There's a lot of things that I don't just forget because creativity is usually calling for me to remember it. That means offenses. That means negative memories as well as the positive. But when you're okay, everything's okay, right? But when things get hard and you're trying to fight these memories that you just have the design of retaining, you got to make sure you think highly. You got to make sure you think positive. I got a 30 second rule. Whatever's going to get me down, you got 30 seconds because you got to get in line for all the good that's about to happen to me. There's always gonna be somebody shooting low, somebody hitting below the belt. There's always gonna be somebody popping off. You gotta think highly enough of yourself to not get on that level. You know, martial arts is a lifesaver for me. To get in tune with my peace, my spirituality. See, most people think it's all about aggression and violence, you know, but that's not what it is, it's expression. To teach yourself how to do something that couldn't do before, to perfect that punch to perfect that kick the discipline it takes mentally emotionally spiritually physically it's consistent alignment with your inner self take the highest road you can think they can't outsmart you they're not smarter than you they're not better than you they're not more advanced than you you can raise your value by thinking higher. Raise your value. Raise the stakes a little bit. They thinking here, you need to think up here. It don't mean you better than them. It just means that you're gonna play at a higher level. It means that you choose to pass this test. It just means that you're gonna raise your value a little bit faster. You know, sometimes you have to take the path of least resistance and just take your time and sit with your craft and work with the people that you work with and you kind of methodically get there over time. You can't control how people are going to take your your nose, mainly for probably artists that, that want to be a part of what we're doing, but they have to realize like we can't represent every artist. I can't show every artist. My encouragement would be to them is to just help them to understand like they can take more control over their own destiny too. Because when I started, don't think I didn't reach out to galleries that, that, that said no to me or reach out to galleries that didn't even respond. But I still found a way to create an opportunity. I was always inclusive and I still have a, lot, a number of those same relationships. I really want the win-win, honestly. Mm -hmm. I approach things with, with the best of intentions. 
But my encouragement to artists would be that, you know, if you're looking for space for yourself, you may have to be the one to create that space for yourself. You know, there's nothing wrong with you renting a space for a weekend, mounting your own show, contacting the library, contacting the cultural center, you know, putting a proposal together for some of these spaces that that ask for uh, proposals for exhibitions. Space can be found. The question is, are you going to be willing to put in the work to get there? And then you have to constantly grow in your craft. My thing is you can't spend more time on branding and less time on on, on growing as an artist. Like you got to be in there looking to bring the funk, baby. You know, it's a lot of talented people out here. If you're not all in on your development, it's going to be difficult to find the success that you think that you deserve. There's usually a lot of inner battles going on in my spirit because I'm a protector and I love hard. I always want to see people at their best, which means I'm very self-aware. I'm usually doing some type of self-evaluation or something to improve and grow, and which means I'm also aware of offenses, of manipulation, and I'm very sensitive to mistreatment and misconduct. I wouldn't really fight for myself as much as I would other people. People are gonna come and seek you out when you have a higher way of thinking. Always take the highway. It's not about who's better, it's about who gets in the habit and builds the habit of thinking higher. If you do that on a constant basis, it's gonna become your nature. It's gonna be something that you do naturally. And the real of it is, once you know you can just whip somebody's ass, your confidence goes up, you're less likely to get into physical confrontations with people because you get that out at the gym. And it's not about ego anymore. It's not foreseeing who's got the bigger balls. It's not foreseeing who's tougher. Now it's sacred. This is a place I go when I wanna express myself, when I wanna vent. This is where I go to heal. That's a video shot right there, though. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, First rule of martial arts is you need to learn how to heal people. There are people who are hurting inside. They can't express it with words. They got to punch the bag. I want to help people express themselves. I want to help people heal. Got the way. I want to help them find that middle ground, that balance. This, this is the heart of JKD right here. This, yeah. this is the heart of a martial artist. It's pure expression. It's raising the bar. It's climbing higher. It's revving up and reaching higher heights. And it applies to everything, not just martial arts. This is life. So yeah, take the highway of thinking in all times. In all things, think high. Y'all with me? Well, let's get it, man. Swear. Let's go. Every now and then we get lost when we're in our gift. Every now and then you run into that, that detour, that roadblock that you just, you hear and you don't know where to go now. This is gonna happen. It's normal, it's life. That's when you let your, your heart, you let your passion GPS you, let your heart reroute you. 
Your heart is a navigation system. It's like Siri, it's like Google Maps. It's voice guided instruction. See, you can't be going through life and just looking at the map the whole time, you know? You have to have it written on your heart. You gotta be listening to your passion. This is why vision is so important. Once you write that vision and you download that into your heart, your heart will start navigating you. You'll know when it's right. You'll get those chills, you know? You'll get that excitement. And it's usually gonna be at a time where it's the hardest. It's gonna be at a time where it's like, man, I wanna give up. You're gonna have to look at your passion and get past that roadblock, get past that stump, get over that speed bump, get up that hill, get over that hurdle. That's what your passion is for, it's your navigation, it's your guidance. I can't separate it, you know. Uh, I honestly can't. Because I think, I think so much of what I do, like I said earlier, you know, the decisions that I've made have been instinctual. I see an opportunity or I'm thinking about something and I'm like, yeah, this is, this is, let's, let's do it. You know, let's put it out there. It's just something that comes about. You know, it's a combination of my gut, my brain, my years of experience. You know, so I'm not just making decisions randomly. Like we're breaking down where we've been, what we've seen and what we think we can present that's gonna work. It's not a separation between my gut and my heart and my instincts. Now I'm not, I'm not always right, nobody is, but I'm often more right than wrong in the decisions. Energy, favor, intentionality. There's a quote that I love. Uh, I had a, a colleague back home in Arkansas that wrote this book called Stewardship. And the quote that I remember most in there, man, she said, I believe that the universe is designed in such a manner that if we put forth the effort, it must yield to us. You know, the money doesn't make you successful. I mean, because we, pro we produced events. I talked to some of my colleagues and I hear some of the budgets that they've had to produce events. And I talked to one recently and she told me her budget was 600,000. I'm like, what? I'm like, man, the shows that I done put on for 30 grand, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, man, it's right. like, come on. It's like, so it's not, it's not the money. You know, it's 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 the passion and and the work ethic, and then building a team and present it with love. That's the difference about fire. That's what we bring. That's what that's really the secret sauce, bro. It's like what we do. Mm -hmm. We love it, and we want you to come into the love that we put into the project. You know, and people feel that when they come for real. If love can guide me through something as invisible and out of this dimension as a song I know I can trust it to guide me through the necessary steps to get the most out of my dreams as well can your heart tell you can your passion tell you exactly where you need to work what skills you need to pick up what school you need to go to what people you need to surround yourself with can your passion explain that to you and make suggestions to you that it needs so it can live A space like these. Most songs that come to me, I have to trust the passion. I have to just remain in a state of receiving. And I realize that songs are not made, they're received. This is how I've learned to trust that passion when I'm excited and downloading so much that I can barely receive it, I need to move on that. And I don't need to move later, I need to move now, while it's fresh in my spirit, while the faith is activated. See, you're supposed to let love GPS because God is love, right? The creator is love. 
and get an image of love floating around the universe and floating around everything else. What I'm telling you is that love has been here before. Passion has been here before. It's been in the past, it's in the present, and it's in the future all at once. And if you follow your passion, it knows its way around. Only thing you gotta do, keep checking in with your heart. You can say I've even learned to be obedient to that passion because that passion is always taking me higher. I have never lost by following my passion. But I have lost by hesitating, by not following my first mind, by, by trusting the thought that's clouded by limitations and, and reality checkpoints. Your heart will lead and guide you into all of that truth. It'll lead and guide you into all of the secrets. Your heart will comfort you. Every time you're trying to figure out where you're going, check with your heart, man. Check with your heart. Let love GPS. Let passion GPS. That's how we swerve in our gift. You can do this. You can do it. You can do it. You already in it. You just gotta swerve, man. Let's get it. Scoop. I mean, we're constantly investing in Bahia, investing in the team, but I think it's about legacy at this point, putting the people in place putting the infrastructure in place so, you know, Bayer can thrive once we're gone and continue to be an example. We got a great team, man. We've been blessed with some people that we love, that love the culture. And so when I think about the future, that's what I'm thinking about. One, we continue to do what we're doing, continue to grow, to reach, present well, create opportunities, putting the infrastructure in place for this to be sustainable as an institution. There are certain principles that you live by a uh, certain code of conduct or just for, for me, you know, anything that we do, I become a student of it and, I'm, and, and I want to be the example, you know, I want to work in excellence. I want to uh, be remembered just like them cave drawings on the wall, <laughs> like Najee was here. You feel me? Your gift is alive. What's in your heart, it's not just a thing, it's not just an idea, it's not just a hobby. Your gift, it's alive, it's living, it's breathing. It's been existing before you were here. It knows where to find the money if you put the focus on it. If you prioritize your gift, it knows where to go, it knows where to take you, it knows where to direct you to get everything it needs to grow like it's already been doing in the lives of so many other people. So when you feel like you living above your means and like you ain't got enough money or enough resources to do your dream, put your dream first and your dream will lead and guide you to everything it needs for it to grow. I know it sounds mystical and magical and crazy, but follow the dream, follow what's in your heart, follow the passion, it's alive. It knows exactly where to go to feed itself and to feed you and to make sure everything it needs to grow and to feed others. It knows the routes, the routes to get there, no dead end. 
Mike check one two swerve bird song signing off but before I do I wanted to say thank you for everybody who's tuning in anybody who's clocking in to what I'm doing you are so appreciated and let me just say I apologize for anyone who's been looking down on you talking down to you making you feel afraid or inferior just never forget how special you are, how beautiful you are, and how valuable you are. I appreciate you.